Okay, you pinned me. And I'm recording. Excellent. So you're all set. Did you mute, mute everybody? Yep, you're good, you're good to go. Okay. And you can hear me. All right, it's time to say good morning. Can you say good, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Kaisa is showing off the electronic robot he's been creating. So if you didn't hear already, you're going to need a chair for today's workout. Um, and a robot. And a robot. If you have a robot, also bring your robot. The chair is just going to be something sturdy. Um, so if you need to move where you're located in order to be by a chair, you don't need a ton of room around the chair, but you do need a chair. Um, and if you don't have a dining room chair option, the edges of your couch could work. It's the, I'd like it to be a little bit more solid or less squishy than your couch, but you can make it work. Um, and we're going to start just walking in place as people come in. Maybe I'll walk in place next to my chair so that people will, as they come in, they will go get their chair. <laughs> um, I hope that everybody is doing well this morning. The sun is out in Minneapolis and somehow that makes that makes everything a little easier. It's a good feeling. So. We have reports of soreness. Oh, we have reports of soreness. Mm -hmm. Oh, very good, very good. I love reports of soreness. Feel free to text me or email me or post on our Facebook page your reports of soreness. Um, it's, you know, sort of, there's some kind of gratification that a personal trainer gets in hearing that, but also it's very useful for me to know Okay, that, that workout we did yesterday really got me on the sides of my hips or my thighs. Or It just teaches me, since I can't see you guys in person, it teaches me what, where your body's at and what you're working on. So feel free to let me know. Bring your legs a little bit wider and see if you can step wide. So just wide legs and then bring them into little, and then back out to wide and then in. It's a wide. And then if you're just joining us, you're going to need a chair, like your dining room chair or a fairly stable chair. Um, so you can find that you can move us in yourself if you need to, to get yourself closer to a chair and reset up. Let's do some uh, just quick arms moving like this. You can even bounce your knees, just kind of moving. Let's switch arms so they go back and forth. Moving like this. And back together is like we're, this would be like bunny hopping or jumping, bending your knees a little bit as you go. Now we're going to make your arms big. Try not to run into your chair with your arms. Big, huge circles. Three. If your upper body's sore, this is a great way to work out a little bit of that soreness. Reverse your circles. Big, huge arm circles. Two. Oh, I'm hitting the doorway. Three. Closer than I normally stand. All right, then you're going to let's do a little bit of head circle. One direction, three times. Two, just gentle circle. Three. And then circle the other way. One. Two. One more time around. Good. Let's circle your hips. They can just go right into circling around. You can have your hands on your hips if you want. Try to go front side, back side. I'm not breaking it down today. If you're new and this feels really weird, don't worry about it. Just do your own approximation of it. And then let's circle the other way. It doesn't have to be exact. Nobody is judging. It's just about moving your body a little bit. Okay, so shake your upper body. Shake, shake, shake your arms. Shake your head. Okay, shake your one leg hard as you can. Switch to the other leg, shake that other leg. Now you're gonna try and shake everything. So shake your legs, shake your arms, shake your head, shake your shoulders, blah, blah, blah. Shake your hips. Hannah, Hannah, is, here. Hannah 
and Thea. Yeah. Awesome. Shake, guys, shake. Hannah and Thea look good. They're having fun. Scott's really going. And Scott's got a good shake going too. Awesome, you guys. Okay, now pause. Okay, so that was just to get your juices flowing. Bring your chair so that you can see me and you can use your chair. I'll have to play a little bit with where I sit. Okay, so we're gonna work on a bunch of chair things. <laughs> this is an experiment. Okay, so the we're gonna start with some squats. So that's the whole reason for the chairs. I wanna work on single leg squats, but we're gonna start with double leg squats. So you're gonna put your hands here, unless you're worried about balance, and then feel free to have your hands down. You're gonna lower your butt down to the chair, and then you're gonna stand up. Now, for some of you, this may be less range of motion than you've been doing. For some of you, this may be more range of motion that you've been doing. If that means you get down here and you maybe have to help yourself up a little bit, that's okay. We're just gonna do a few more of these. This is just our warm up. You can just barely touch your butt down. That brings you down a little bit lower. So you can see that you can just barely touch down. Barely touch down. Just do a couple more. No. Touch no. down. Touch down. Now, we're gonna try one-legged. So, you're gonna keep your chair there. Actually, let's all start seated. So everybody sit down, come to the very edge of your chair, send one leg forward. Now, you may not stand up. Your goal is to try to stand up. You may just shift forward a little bit and then come back down to your chair. You may find that you can stand all the way up, go all the way back down. So play with that. You're gonna do five on each side. If that's really easy for you, the full version, you can just have the chair next to you and stand up and down and use the chair to give you a little bit of a balance. So again, first version, stay seated. So guys, go if you know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, keep watching. First version, send one leg out in front of you. Sit nice and tall. Lean forward. Then try to stand up. You may make it an inch, you may not make it at all, that's okay. If you got the whole thing, you can also get so that you're just barely touching down and then standing back up. Just do one more on this side, barely touching down and up. And then we'll switch sides. So starting with your other foot, Extended forward. It doesn't have to be off the ground. That's the advanced version. You can do that. Lean forward a little bit. Squeeze your butt. Try to stand up a little bit. Come back down. You can go all the way into the full up and full down. You can go all the way into the full pistol squat, which is where you lower all the way down. And you'll discover that you have one side that's easier than the other side. This is my harder side. I could easily get stuck down here. <laughs> Try to keep working on that side. We're gonna do a couple more. Last one, and come up. Back to your chair. I'm gonna turn my chair sideways just so you can see what I'm doing. You don't have to. So, my hands are gonna be on the chair. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, Scoot my butt off of the chair. This is the first position that you're holding. Shoulders are tight, holding here. Now if this feels like your spot, stay here and hold this the whole time. If you want, you can do some dips. So you bend your elbows and you lift up. That's level two. Level two, three, straighten your legs so that your legs are out in front of you not bent and keep lifting your butt as you come up. Knees can be bent. Keep going, we're gonna do a few more. What if you get a cramp? If you get a cramp, stop and breathe. Okay. <laughs> Shake out the muscle that's cramping. You might still be here, just holding your shoulders. We'll hold for five, four, three, two, one and relax. Okay, next. We're gonna play with push ups. So you can use, make sure your chair is, um, if you're worried about it sliding, make sure it's pushed up against something. 
So here's our one option for push-ups, right? Let me move my chair out a little bit. So you can choose this option. Now, if this option, if you're doing full push-ups on the floor, this isn't your choice. If you're doing full, full push-ups on your floor, this is your choice. So I'm doing now one-handed. I'm not gonna lower down nearly as far, right? Make sure that um, you take off your socks so your feet don't slide, slide out from underneath you. And you try to keep your torso parallel to the chair. Try for five on each side. Now you might be here, lowering down, pressing up. You might be on one arm and just holding it. That's okay too. Or you might try to do one inch of a push up and then come to a short break and we'll switch to the other side. Hips and shoulders stay parallel as you're trying the one arm push up. So you guys didn't expect to do one arm push ups, I bet. Okay, one arm in the middle. Legs can go a little bit wider than they normally would. Other arms out to the side or behind your back. Lower down, press up. Lower down. You might be just holding this position, one armed. You might be in two arms doing your two arm push ups. All of those options are great. Try to get full, as full of range of motion as you can as you try them. You might imagine that you're doing a one-arm push-up. That's actually useful. Imagine that you're going lower and then come back up to center. Okay, chair comes back. I don't know if this one will be easier to see forward or sideways. We're gonna do something one arm again. So put right arm down on the chair. I'm gonna have you think about your left leg. So it's right arm, left leg, diagonal. You're gonna lift your butt up and put it back down. So the appendages that are touching the, sur the ground or the chair are opposite. The other two lift up, wave at me. Lift your butt up and come down. Working this shoulder and your core and down. So your butt's kind of going up and back. I know this is a tricky one to be teaching. If you've done a Turkish get up before, that's what we're doing. We're doing a, a preparation for the Turkish get up. Wave your arm and leg, make sure they're up off the floor. Up. We'll do one more. You're working this shoulder. Up and down. Okay, switching. So now you're gonna have your right foot on the ground, your left arm on the chair. Other two appendages are up waving at me. Okay, they're gonna stay up. Lift your butt. You might just stay here. My butt's up off the floor, okay? Or I might send my butt back and down. It's okay to just lift up on one arm. That's a decent amount of work for that shoulder. You can send your butt back diagonal. It's kind of swinging back. We'll do two more. One more and come back. Now I actually reversed the order. I meant to teach this next exercise first. So this might make it make more sense. So this is two arms. You're gonna have your hands on your chair. You're gonna send your butt forward and then you're gonna try, oh, I know. Go to the very edge of your chair. Right. And we'll start by lifting your butt up backwards. Lift your butt up backwards and then bring it forward. So it goes backwards and forwards, like you're rocking. I'm gonna turn sideways. So my butt goes back and forward and back. It doesn't have to go a lot forward. It can, you can go all the way to there. This is the core exercise. So feel your core. That's what's pulling you through. We'll do three more. Three. It's okay if you're slower and you don't get three in. Two. One more time. And relax. So you should be feeling your shoulders a little bit. Take them out. We're gonna repeat the uh, pistol squats. So, 
Starting with your right leg. You can start seated. You can start with a regular squat, just standing up. And then coming back down, touching your butt. Try not to use your hands as you come back up. Level two, one leg. So my left leg's up off the floor. I shift forward and then try to stand up. If you lose your balance, get closer to a wall. Number three is to try and use the chair beside you to go a little bit lower. We're still on the same leg. See if you can get all the way to the chair. Maybe you can go a little lower. Maybe you get stuck down here and then you have to stand back up. That's okay. Yeah, so try to keep all your weight on this leg. My hand is really doesn't need to touch the chair. Okay, so the chair is to help if you're gonna fall or you'll discover that, oh my gosh, I'm stuck down here. I'm gonna push a little bit, but it's a squat on one leg. So I'm not tipping into the chair. Do one more on this side of whatever version you're doing. You can do it without your hand to see if you've got the right technique. And then you might need the chair to help you up a little bit. Other leg. So again, you can do two legs. Or you can start by lifting your right leg, shift forward, stand up a little bit, maybe all the way, come on back down. Stand up and back down. So keeping your shoulders and hips on top of your leg is really important. Going down, so I don't want to lean sideways. Going down. Let's do a couple more. Everything stays upright and vertical. Everybody do one more, whatever your version is. Molly, Molly seems to be doing this and playing catch at the same time. <laughs> Molly's doing the ultra advanced version and she's playing catch while doing single leg pistols. That's amazing. That's awesome. And come back to your chair. All right, that's the added, like the kids are helping out version. I like that. Okay, so dips. So you're gonna have your hands on the edge of the chair, walk your butt forward. Shoulders press down your back. <clears throat> you might stay here. This might be your exercise. Keep those shoulders pressing down your back. And if you want, you can add an elbow bend. So make sure your shoul um, shoulders don't come up by your ears. Imagine you have really long earrings on. You're not going to bump them on your shoulders. So then you can also straighten your legs if you have room. Lowering down, lifting up. Lowering down, lifting up. Let's do three more. Three and up. Two, and up one more time. It's okay if you're just staying still, and up. Okay, push-ups. First option, both hands go as low as you can. Second option, one hand. Just hold it there, making sure you're paying attention to your shoulder. Locked in. Third option, add a push-up and come back up. You can have your hand behind your back or straight out to the side. Everybody get started doing your push-ups. Whatever variation feels right. We're just gonna do two more. One, other variation, check your hips. Make sure they're parallel. Ugh. Okay, shake out that arm. We're gonna do the other side. Variation one. Both hands. Variation two. One hand closer to the middle. Other hand goes out to the side or at your back, holding there. Again, don't come in close to your ear. Make lots of space for your neck. Third variation, you can start anytime. Doing your lower, do a push. See how low you can get and not lose your form. It should look like if I were looking at you, you were doing a normal push-up. You just happen to have 
one less appendage. Like when you see a dog <laughs> hopping around, do one more, you suddenly realize that it only has three legs, but it was moving remarkably similar. That's your goal. It's kind of a strange analogy. Three-legged three dog goal. Three-legged dog goal. Okay, <laughs> so next, I'm gonna do this one facing this way. We'll do it in the proper order this time. Hand at the front of your chair. You're gonna slide your butt up and then forward. You can step a little bit with your feet. I wonder if you have to, let's see. Step back. No, you can feet, keep your feet still too. You may just be lifting your butt up a little bit. You may not be able to get it all the way up. There's some hamstring flexibility involved in that. Just do two more. Butt goes back and forward. One more, goes back and forward. Okay, last exercise, seated on your chair. One hand, so this is your right hand is down. Left foot is down. Wave your other two. Okay, now, first stage, just press into your arm that's on the floor. Or it's not the floor. Next version, you can lift up and down. Up and down. Really rotating around your right shoulder. We'll do one more, and then we'll do the other side. So now left hand down, right leg down, other two waving. Okay, try lifting up and just holding there. Then you can add in your butt goes back, and forward a little bit, back, and forward, back, and forward. We'll do two more, back, and forward, really working that shoulder, back, forward, and now you're done. That was our move for today. Send me notes and tell me if your chair slid all over and it was really hard to do on your chair, or if it worked, but because it was an experiment. Thank you, guys. I liked it. I'll give you feedback now. I like it. <laughs> okay, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> It was a little intense on my wrist, but ah, good to know. I want, I'll be curious to hear if anybody else had that thought. Oh, let's go forward, she says. <laughs> okay. Okay. Meditation today. So, yesterday we had three levels of meditation, um, and today we're all going to focus on level one. And level one is. Um, just keeping your eyes open and having a broad awareness of the room. There's some people who need to do this kind of meditation every day, uh, but we're all gonna try in solidarity with the folks who can't close their eyes to do this today. And so I'm gonna stop talking for a sec so I can catch my breath. Get in touch with your breath. And today we are going to not have any particular posture of our bodies. So you can, you can sit however you're comfortable. You can sit back in your chair. You can sit with your legs crossed. You can sit however you're comfortable when you're normally sitting in your day-to-day -day life. And the point I want to make today is that meditation isn't reserved for a special time of day or a special posture or a special set of thoughts. Anytime during your, your day, you can say, okay, I would like to not be anxious for like five minutes, or I would like to just pay attention to what I'm doing. And there's two ways, two really main ways that I've found that works really good to be mindful in your day-to-day -day life. Mindful just means kind of meditating as you're going about your day-to-day -day life. The first is um, the breath. So the breath is always there. It's always a cornerstone of our meditation practice. So just get into your touch with your breath right now, even as you go about and take care of your room. Don't feel like you're locked into a posture today. You can move as your body needs to move.
And even though your posture may be a little different today, the posture of your emotions and your psychology is that I'm here, I'm showing up, whatever is here is okay. And I'm just gonna pay attention to my breath right now. This is great for dishes. Breathing naturally, paying attention to your breath. Another way that you can access this um, in a more of a day-to-day -day way is to really focus on the sense of touch. So if you're working at your computer and you feel yourself getting a little stress, stressed and tense, it's a good practice to really feel yourself sitting in the chair, the feeling of the chair against your legs and bottom and your feeling of your feet on the floor and the feeling of your hands on the mouse or the keyboard. Everyone should write one mindful email today. So right now, let's just practice that. Get in touch. That just doesn't work. Let's see. Everyone. Uh, Pay attention to the sense of touch, just however you are. The pressures of your legs in the chair, your hands, if they're together, or what that feels like. Your hands touching your legs, what does that feel like? And another few seconds. Tuning into the sense of touch. And back to your breath for another five seconds. Maybe you feel a little bit more still, more peaceful, more centered than you did five minutes ago. And you can access this any time of the day you'd like. Make a difference time. Thanks, everybody. <clears throat> You want to do this one? Yeah, I'm excited about Amber, this one. Amber wants to do this one. Okay, so um, yesterday I got an email from a friend who's a participant, Cassandra, and she signed off the email with, I hope you have a silver lining day. And I thought that was so beautiful. And so today's Make a Difference is for you to notice the silver linings. It can be in the big picture or it can be just in today. And the advanced version of it is to tell somebody else what silver linings you are finding. And if you'd like to, you could text in one right now. Yes. Into, and we'll share them. Um, any silver linings that you have as a result of COVID or silver linings um, as a result of changes that have happened recently, anything you want. You could also post them on our Facebook page if we. Yes, yes, and if you if um, if you're on our Facebook group, uh, we we enjoy hearing them on our Facebook group as well. All right. Well, there's one. Anna says, "Oh, oh she got a petty from her daughter last night." Yay! 
the kid silver lining from Eric is playing in the street. Yeah, no <laughs> doubt. The streets are a lot more available. Anybody else? Okay. Share them on share them on our Facebook group if you if you think of them later and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Okay, and we're just going to switch over there if anyone wants to stay in chat.